Hey everyone, welcome back to Grace Note Forge. So today I wanted to go over the three different methods that I frequently use for modeling a simple ring band in Blender and also talk about why I tend to use them for certain designs and some tips about using them for 3D printing. So in Blender, most of the time, there's a lot of different ways to accomplish the same task. And when I first started 3D modeling for jewelry in Blender, I would always start by making a simple ring in the quickest way that I knew how, and then end up spending a lot of time tweaking and adjusting that model until it started to take shape. But depending on what the design is that you're going for, sometimes there's a better way to start your model. So I'm going to start off with probably one of the fastest and easiest ways to make a ring in Blender, and that's just with a torus mesh. So I'm going to delete everything on the default page, hit shift A to bring up my add options, and then in mesh, I'm just going to go down to torus. And now in this little drop down down here to the left, I'm just going to adjust some of these options uh, to better suit my ring. So I'm going to adjust the major radius to 9 millimeters to be about a size 8 in US measurements, and then adjust the minor radius to 1, uh, giving me a total width of about 2 millimeters. I'm also going to rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis. And from here it's not looking too bad, but I do want to adjust the resolution to kind of make it a little more pleasing to print. So I'm going to bump the major segments up to something like 160, and the minor segments the same. And if this is as far as you want to take this design, the torus option is really nice. It leaves you with a decently dense mesh. You can see if I go into wireframe mode uh, that we will have some good resolution for 3D printing. And this model is ready to be exported in a STL file or your preferred file for 3D printing. Now one tip to keep in mind is that if you're designing your ring to fit a specific ring size, you will have to make a few more adjustments. So if I bring up a curved circle and scale that up to the size that we're shooting for, I'll rotate this on the x-axis as well. You can see when I go into x-ray mode with Alt-Z that our ring will be undersized when we go to print. So we'll either have to scale up our entire model or we can adjust for that difference when we create the torus in the first place. So I'm just going to create the torus one more time. Rotate 90 degrees. And then this time I'm just going to add the minor radius to the major radius to ensure that the inner diameter is at the appropriate size. Now some nice things about using the torus method is that it was a very quick way of making a simple band. But really when it comes to going much further, you kind of have some limitations on what you can do. Now you can always do things like boolean operations to adjust your design, or scaling the mesh in the Y plane to make it a little thicker. But as you can see, if I hit tab and go into edit mode, we have such a dense mesh that sometimes it can be really tricky to work with. But one other way of easily adjusting a dense mesh like this is with the proportional editing tool up here. Once this is selected, you can do things like go into front facing view by hitting 1 on the numpad, hitting Alt Z to get into x-ray mode, and then just selecting over a portion of the mesh. Now if we go into side view by hitting 3 on the numpad, we can scale this on the Y plane again by hitting S and Y and then adjusting the mouse wheel to change the influence of the scale. And this is a really effective way of adjusting a mesh that has a lot of vertices like this. So 
So the next method I'm going to go over is curve modeling with bevels. Now for this one, all we need to do is hit shift A and over in curves, we're just going to go down to circle. And just like before, we're going to stick with our nine millimeters and rotate on the X axis. Now I'm going to go over to this green icon for our object data properties for our curve and click on the drop down for geometry. Then just like I talked about in some of my previous videos, I'm going to bump up the depth to the same as what we had for the torus. So a width of two millimeters. And you can see we're left with the same effect that the torus would have given us. And just like the torus, if I unhide the circle that we're shooting for for the size of our ring and go into front facing view, you can see that our model is still undersized. And that can be changed with the offset over in geometry. So if we bump that up to the same as the depth, that'll fix that for the size of our ring. And there is one other thing to keep in mind. Although this looks really well in the viewport, if we right click and hit shade flat, this is the actual geometry that we're given. So it's important to remember to bump up the resolution changing this from 12 to 64 and then bump up the resolution down on the bevel to 32. And there is one extra step that you would need to take in order to 3D print this and that is to right click and then convert this to a mesh. Right now it's still a bevel and if we were to hit tab and go into edit mode you can see that we're still working with a curve. And this is one of the benefits of working with curves is that it's really easy to go in and select these vertices by hitting G and then moving them around to get a very smooth shape with your design. Now, if this is all that we were going to do, I would personally stick with the torus method because it has the fewest amount of steps. So another benefit to modeling a ring with curves is that you have several options for bevels. You can easily adjust the shape of the profile or you can use another curve object to create a custom profile around your ring. So if I hit shift A and create another curve circle, I can change the radius down to something like two. And just to make this a little easier to see, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees on the Y and then bring this up on the Z and a little back on the Y. Now, if we select our larger curve, we can select a bevel object. And now the ring has taken the profile of our second curve. And another quick thing to keep in mind is that it looks like our resolution has dropped down again, even though it's still set to 64. And that's because our resolution on our second curve needs to be bumped up as well. Now, one of the main benefits of creating a ring with a custom profile like this is that if we select our second curve and then go into edit mode, you can see if I go into side view, and then hit Alt Z to get into X-Ray, we can easily select these vertices and adjust the profile of our ring on the fly. We can right click to subdivide and add more points to our curve, and then easily make adjustments to adjust the overall profile of the ring. Now the curve method is great for ring designs that have the same profile along the entire curve of the ring, but one of the biggest downsides of modeling with this method is that you don't really have a lot of options for changing the profile from one end of the ring to the other. You can still adjust the size of the ring by going into edit mode 
and adjusting the scale of these vertices by hitting Alt S. But the shape of the profile will remain the same along the entire ring. And once you're done with your design, just remember to right click and convert this to mesh before exporting for 3D printing. And the last method that I'm going to be going over today is probably one of the more complicated, but in my opinion, it really offers good flexibility in terms of design for your ring. So to start out, I'm going to hit Shift A and just create a cylinder. Now in my vertices, I'm just going to change this to 12. For the radius, I'm going to change that to 9. And depth, I'm just going to keep that at 2. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis. And then really quick with the model selected, I'm just going to hit Control A to apply the rotation and scale. Now hitting tab and going into edit mode, I'm going to hit three on the keyboard to get into face select. Select our front face, holding shift and hitting our back face. I'm then going to hit I to inset and then type two for our depth. Now with these faces still both selected, I'm going to select edge up here at the top and just hit bridge edge loops. And you can see that's a pretty quick way of making a low poly ring. Now hitting tab to go back into object mode. I'm just going to go into our modify properties and add a subdivision surface modifier and bump that up to five. Now going back into edit mode, I'm going to make sure that the proportional editing is turned on along with our X and Y symmetry for our vertices. Now if I hit one on the keyboard, I can go into vertice select mode. And now I can begin adjusting our mesh. And what's nice about having the X and Y symmetry turned on up at the top is that I can just select one vertice hit G and then Y to move it. And as you can see, those movements are mirrored. So with proportional editing, I can still go in and make adjustments for how much the other vertices are affected and begin tweaking the design. And as you can see, unlike with modeling a ring with curves, it's really easy to go in and make adjustments to the profile along specific ends of the ring. And just like I showed in my signet ring video, we can adjust how sharp some of these edges are by holding alt and shift selecting and then hitting shift E to create a crease on those edges. And once you're happy with your design, it's important to remember to apply the modifiers before exporting for 3D printing. Now there are some downsides to modeling a ring using this method. One of them is that it can be a little tricky to resize a ring after it's been modeled. So it's not quite as accurate as some other methods. And it also takes some time to get used to modeling with this technique. Sometimes the best way to make changes is while in x-ray mode. And it can be a little difficult to find what edges or vertices you're trying to select. But that being said, I still think that this is a really versatile way of getting really good basic ring shapes for your design. And in my opinion, it's definitely worth practicing. So these definitely aren't the only methods of creating a simple ring in Blender, but they are the methods that I tend to use the most. Let me know what techniques you use to make a simple ring down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.